Okay, this is chapter four called Animal Pills. At this point, George suddenly had an extra good wheeze. Although the medicine covered in the house was forbidden ground, what about the medicines his father used kept on the shelf in the shed next to the hen house? The animal medicines. What about those? Nobody had ever told him he mustn't touch them. Let's face it, George said to himself. Hairspray and shaving cream and shoe polish are all very well. And they will no doubt cause some splendid explosions inside the old geezer. But what the magic mix mixture shows needs a touch of the real stuff, real pills and real tonics to give it a punch and muscle. George picked up the heavy three-quarter full saucepan and carried it out the back door. He crossed the farmyard and headed straight for the shed alongside the hen house. He knew his father wouldn't be there. He was out haymaking in one of the meadows. George entered the, the dusty old shed and put the saucepan on the bench. He looked up at the medicine shelf. There were five big bottles there. Two were full of pills, two were full of runny stuff, and one was full of powder. I'll use them all, George said. Grandma needs them, boy does she need them. The first bottle he took down contained an orange coloured powder. The label said, for chickens with foul pest, hen gripe, sore beaks, gammy legs, cockatitis, egg trouble, broodiness, or the loss of feathers. Mix one spoonful only with each bucket of feed. Well, George said aloud to himself, as he tipped the whole bottle full. The old bird won't be losing any feathers after she's had a dose of this. The next bottle he took down had about 500 gigantic purple pills in it for the horses. Four horses with, with horse throats, it said on the label. The horse-throated horse should suck on one pill twice a day. Grandma may not have a horse throat, he said, but she's certainly got a sharp tongue. Maybe that'll cure that instead. Into the saucepan went 500 gigantic purple pills. Then there was a bottle of thick yellowish liquid for cows and bulls and bullocks. The label said, will cure cowpox, horse mange, crumpled horns, bad breath and bulls, earache, toothache, headache, hoofache, tailache, and sore udders. That grumpy old cow in the living room has every one of those rotten illnesses, George said. She'll need it all. So with a slop and a gurgle, the yellow liquid splashed into the now nearly full saucepan. The next bottle contained a brilliant red liquid. Sheep dip, it said on the label. For sheep with sheep rot and getting rid of ticks and fleas, one spoonful in one gallon of water and slosh it over this sheep. Caution, do not make the mixture any stronger or the wool will fall out and the animal will be naked. By gum, said George, how I'd love to walk in and slosh it all over old grandma and watch the ticks and fleas go jumping off her, but I can't, I mustn't. So she'll have to drink it instead. He poured the bright red medicine into the saucepan. The last bottle on the shelf was full of pale green pigs, pills. Pig pills, the label announced. For pigs with pork prickles, tender trotters, bristle bright and swine sickness. Give one pill a day and in severe cases, two pills may be given. But no more than that, that will make the pig rock and roll. Just the stuff, George said. For that miserable old pig back there in the house, she'll need, every, she'll need a very big dose. He tipped all the green pills, hundreds and hundreds of them into the saucepan. There was an old stick lying on the bench that used to be for a stirring paint. George picked it up and started to mix his marvelous concoction. The mixture was so thick as cream and as he stirred and stirred, many wonderful colours rose up from the dips and blended together. Pinks, blues, greens, yellows and browns. George went on stirring until 
it was all well mixed. But even so, there were still hundreds of pills lying at the bottom that hadn't melted. And there was his mother's splendid powder puff floating on the surface. I, sh I, I shall have to boil it all up, said George. One good quick boil on the stove is all it needs. And with that, he staggered back towards the house with an enormous heavy saucepan. On the way, he passed the garage. So he went in to see if he could find any other interesting ingredients. He had the following. Half a pint of engine oil to keep grandma's engine going smoothly. Some antifreeze to keep her radiator from freezing up in the winter. And a handful of grease to grease her creaking joints. Then back to the kitchen.